Hello and welcome to MailTrap Videos, where we explore the world of emails. In this video, we'll show you how to send emails in Azure via API. Starting in the Azure portal, we need to set up our environment for email sending. This includes linking our domain, setting up some resources, and creating an email communication service in that Azure marketplace. Before starting, ensure that you have an active Azure subscription, as it's necessary for creating and deploying Azure resources. The good news is that the platform offers a free basic account for 12 months that can be scaled as you go. All right, let's hit Create Resources and search for Email Communication Service and add this one. Select your subscription, name your resource, and select your region. Click on Review and Create. Make sure all the details are correct and then let the system deploy everything. This process usually takes a few minutes. While that's deploying, we can create another communication service. This works in tandem with the email service and enhances our email sending capabilities. The process of creating this resource is similar to the previous one. Once both services are deployed and ready, we can link our domain. This step is crucial as it authenticates your sending domain improving the deliverability and credibility of your emails. Navigate to the Domains section within your Azure Communication Service resource and click Connect Domain. Select the resource group, the email service, and enter your domain name in the provided field. Azure will then generate a set of DNS records you'll need to add to your domain's DNS settings. This typically includes text, MX, and CNAME records. Let's quickly copy these records over to our domain's DNS settings. Lastly, in Azure, confirm that these records have been added, and then the domain name will go into the verification process. After a few minutes, refresh this page, and the domain name will be verified. Now, you have closure. With your domain verified, the next crucial step is setting up SPF and DKIM records. These records are essential for email security and help prevent email spoofing and phishing by verifying that the emails sent from your domain are legitimate. Simply return to your domain's DNS settings and copy-paste the SPF and DKIM records provided by Azure, following a step-by-step -step process similar to domain verification. Once you've added these records, you can finish connecting your domain to the email communication service. In order to use this service, we will need these keys for our sending code. In our case, we have two resources, so there is a primary and secondary key. Now that our Azure environment is ready to send emails, let's move on to the actual email sending part. The best is yet to come! In particular, we'll take a look at how to use C Sharp within Azure. We'll begin by integrating the Azure Communication Services email library into our .NET project. Head over to your NuGet package manager, search for this package, and install it. Now, let's write the code. First off, we'll include the necessary namespaces in our projects, specifically Azure and azure.communication.email to access Azure's email functionalities. We'll start our code with a try-catch block to handle potential errors. In case of a failure, we'll aim to catch exceptions of type request failed exception and log the details to the console for troubleshooting. Now, let's store our connection string in a variable. This connection string is crucial as it links our code to the Azure communication service. Next, we create an instance of the email client passing in our connection string. This client will be our gateway to sending emails. We then define our email subject and prepare the HTML content for the body. For the sender, we use a do not reply email address within our verified domain, ensuring our emails are recognized as coming from a trusted source. And let's also indicate the recipient's email. With our email content ready, we initiate the email sending operation. This asynchronous action requires us to wait until completion, ensuring the email is fully processed. We also include details such as the sender, recipient, subject, 
and HTML content in the send request. After sending, we log the operation status to the console, providing immediate feedback on whether the email was sent successfully. Additionally, we retrieve and log the operation ID, offering a reference for tracking and further investigation if needed. Now, all that's left is to test our code. Let's insert the connection string into our code and execute the application. The connection string is in the keys section in Azure where we generated it earlier. Once we paste the string, we can run the code. If everything is configured correctly, the console email will be sent and we will see a success message and operation ID in the console. Let's open our inbox and there is the email. Now let's take a look at how to send emails via Logic App and MailTrap API. Logic Apps allow automated email sending processes with customizable workflows. Head over to the Azure portal, search for Logic App, and hit Create. Give it a name and proceed to deployment. After a few minutes, refresh the page and the deployment should be complete and we can start constructing our workflow. Logic Apps offer a visual builder for this. Let's name our workflow and start editing it in designer mode. We'll start with an HTTP request trigger, perfect for when you want email sent in response to specific web activities. Drag the HTTP request trigger into your workflow. This becomes the entry point of our email process, activating the workflow with every HTTP POST request received. Once the HTTP request trigger is set up in our Logic app, it's time to define the schema. We'll be submitting a JSON object that contains the email details we want to send. For our HTTP request method, we'll stick with the POST as we're sending data to the API. Let's save our progress and now add the action that will send the email. We choose an HTTP action, which allows us to call an external service, in this case, MailTrap API. In the URL field, we will input the MailTrap API endpoint, which could be found in your MailTrap account under the Sending Domains page within the SMTP slash API settings tab. Remember to set the method to post and add the necessary headers like content type set to application slash JSON for our email content and authorization with your MailTrap API key to authenticate the request. In the body of our HTTP action, we'll map the email details from the initial HTTP request trigger. This ensures that the recipient, subject, and content of the email we crafted earlier in our workflow are sent to MailTrap's API, triggering the email sending with everything set up, let's run this workflow. Let's go! And there is our email waiting to be opened. Last but not least, we'll cover how to send emails using Azure Function Apps. They offer a serverless execution environment for building scalable applications and services. By grouping functions together, we can manage, deploy, and scale them more efficiently, sharing resources across multiple functions. To get started, navigate to create a resource in the Azure portal and select Function App. Here, you'll provide a unique name for your app. Choose your preferred runtime stack, in this case, .NET, and select your operating system. After setting up the basics, hit Review and Create, and Azure will take a moment to deploy your Function App. Once the deployment finishes, you're all set to start writing your email sending function. In your Function Apps dashboard, create a new function with an HTTP trigger. This trigger allows your function to respond to HTTP requests, making it perfect for sending emails based on web activities or API calls. All right, let's name the function and finish creating it. Within the code editor for the function, we'll clear the default template and start fresh. Our goal is to write a function that sends an email when triggered. We'll create a method named sendEmailAsync, marked as private and asynchronous, 
designed to manage the email sending process and return a string indicating the outcome. And now we can declare variables for the sender, recipient, email subject, and body using the string data type for each. Next, we'll need the API key. Like in the previous examples, to authenticate our email send request, we'll use the API key from MailTrap. With the key and email details ready, we construct the email payload housing our emails from, to, subject, and body. It's structured to match the MailTrap API's expected format for email sending requests. To send our email, we initiate an HTTP client instance. This client is tasked with making HTTP requests to external services. We set its base address to point to the MailTrap API endpoint, directing where our email payload should be sent. Before sending, it's crucial to prepare our HTTP client with the right headers. So, let's add an authorization header that includes the API key, allowing MailTrap to authenticate our request. Next, let's ensure content type is set to application slash JSON, and let's use post async with the send endpoint and email content as parameters to send the email asynchronously. Lastly, we'll capture the API's response and convert it to a string to check the result of our email send request. Now, with our HTTP client configured, we'll move forward with crafting the send email async function. The send email async function kicks off with a logging statement, acknowledging that the HTTP trigger has begun processing. Next, we read the request's JSON body asynchronously, deserialize it to a dynamic object, and then extract the necessary email parameters such as to email, from email, subject, and body. These parameters are then passed into the send email async method. Wrapped in an await statement, the method call ensures that the email send operation is handled asynchronously. Finally, the function returns with an OK object result, signaling a successful email operation with the output enclosed in the response message. To confirm everything is working, we perform a quick test within the Azure portal. The function behaves as it would in a live environment. It processes the test data and sends out the actual email. Right after, we can check the inbox and see our test email, proving that the function sends emails as expected. That's a wrap for our tutorial on sending emails through Azure using API. We hope you found the tutorial helpful. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by MailTrap, an email delivery platform to test, send, and control your email infrastructure all in one place. Like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to see more tutorials like this one. Don't forget to check out our other videos for more useful content on email deliverability. See you in the next one.